if so fast it will come, harm, evil, corruption, awdan, awdan. In other words, one on top of the other, one on top. You know, you like you have the, you like you have a straw mat, and you have the 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 the, the interweaving of the straw in the mat. There'll be no gap between the fitnas. That's how quickly they'll come one after the other. They'll be linked together. And then further, he stated that the fitna, the harms, the evil, the tribulations, the trials will come so fast. And they will fall on the heart of the human being. The heart will receive the qulub. The heart will receive and absorb. And he stated, there will be two parts to the person's heart. Listen to this point here. Listen to this point here. There will be two sections uh, in the heart. that will be distributed into two parts for the men and the women. One heart will be that heart. That that heart... With regards, it will not accept those fitnas, those evils. It will not allow it to absorb the evil. It won't accept it, won't embrace them, won't allow them, won't let them come near him or her. So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said then, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will put a nice white sort of veil over that qalb, over that heart. And that, that veil will be like a pearl, like will be shining and and clean and pure and shining and glowing. It will be illuminated, that individual himself. And he won't receive those fitnas. Because he hasn't received that fitna, that harm, that evil. And until Qiyamah, until the judgment day, what a beautiful guarantee is given. Until the day of judgment, no fitna will impact that heart. No evil or harm or negative. And there will be another heart, a condition, as soon as the fitnas arrive, the evil, the harms, the tribulations, the ordeals, it will absorb them, it will receive them, and it will have that capacity. Just like dirt, you know dirt pulls on the dirt. Yeah? So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there will a black stain will come onto the heart. Severe black stain. Dirty. And that person, his condition, his feeling, his emotion will be such, just like a black vessel upside down. And... Inside that vessel, there's no capacity left inside that person. No good qualities, no any type of good feature or quality he will accept or listen to, except for that, that every bad thing and sin will overwhelm him and follow his desires. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, whatever his nafs says, or her nafs says, he says, oh, this is fine. Whatever the desires say, he or she will say it's fine. In other words, his standard won't be Quran, it won't be Hadith, it won't be Deen. Rather, he will follow the desires of his nafs. Oh, interest is jais. Riba is jais. Who said don't take riba? Oh, you don't have to keep the beard. It's not, it's not necessary. To the severe extent that he will be connected to that. And all the world will tell him Hadith, Quranic verses, but the heart will not accept because the stain, the black stain will be on the heart. This is the sign. So keep on, let's analyze ourselves now. Because we're discussing here, isn't it? That's why we've come here to this gathering, to assess ourselves. So let's keep doing self-analysis. May Allah not accept. May Allah no, no, no. Have I got a heart like this? That time and time again I'm advised, and that person doesn't absorb the nasiya. Time and time again he's told it's haram and he doesn't accept it. Time and time he's told, or she's told, that adab or punishments, the severity of the consequences of actions. Why? Because that person's desires... They, that's his guidance for his life. According to his desires, he will say someone is wrong or somebody is good or somebody is bad. His, he won't have no other connection with anybody except for his desires. Just like, you know, for example, uh, he will say that he's a Muslim, a believer, but he'll have his own deen, lifestyle. Wherever he sees his desires are being fulfilled, he'll submit to that and accept that. So what is this we're being taught? Allah's Nabi Wasallam is telling us a warning sign. here. So let's analyze ourselves. Let's analyze ourselves. I consider that we are in this era of fitna. Is there a worse era to come? We are in that day and age now. Natural tragedies, the real fitna, harm and evil is when the human being leaves the deen. When he falls into deception, regards his deen. Whilst he's practicing, he falls. Whilst he's practicing, he drops down. 
That's the fitna. This is the real harm and evil and ordeal we need to be aware of. Just like Allah said in the Quran, always we are reminded. Who will receive the fitna? Your heart will receive them. Which heart? And it won't receive the good thing. It will be your heart that doesn't receive a good thing. And it will receive the bad thing. It's your heart. So what we learn is, the message we get from this hadith, is that if we want to be saved from these harms and evils that will destroy our deen, about which Allah Ta'ala has given us orders, and the fitnas that will eliminate Allah's orders from our life, all of those are connected with the qulub of the human being, the hearts of the human beings. In other words, if the human being wants to be saved from the fitnas, the evils, the harms, there's only one method. One, he has to protect his heart. He must protect his heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we must protect our hearts. If the human being protects his heart, looks over his heart, develops his heart, what will happen? Then the heart won't receive those fitnas, those harms, alhamdulillah. Whoever protects his heart, preserves his heart, then he won't receive the harms, the evils. When he doesn't receive the harms and the evils, then his external and internal part of his life that Allah has given as a treasure, all of those qualities will be focused and utilized for Allah's connection. And he won't hesitate in the dunya. He won't get trapped. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is the message we're getting today. Rather, in reality it's one thing, it's the same. It's the same. That will define it's the straight path. And that you can say is the, the straight path. Whoever's following that definition, consider that heart is the right heart. That heart and that deen is right. His salah is correct. His ibadah and worship is correct. Who's on that straight path? That we have asked from Allah. Allah ihdinas sirat al-mustaqim sirat al-ladina anamta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wal dalin That straight path is that path in which there are these factors, these elements. That that person is following the path of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is practicing the sunnah. What is the de- other name for the, name, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is the way of the sunnah. So that's ihdinas sirat al-mustaqim. Is this the case or not? I ask you. How can I say that Musa alayhi salam's path or Isa alayhi salam's path, it will be, they're all prophets for us, 100%. And the Torah is correct. In Jili say, as Umar radiyallahu read the Torah, didn't it? And what was the face of the Prophet salam turned red? Why are you reading this? Torah. Why? Because there's no need for anything now. What do we have now? Whenever it runs, then it will be my way that will run from now on, said the Prophet salam. Isa alayhi salam will come at the end of time and he will imitate me. That his, his story is finished before that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we are Ummatis, we're in the nation of the Prophet wasallam. So does it justify us that we look at other ways, other methods? Hazrat Umar Radun was explained whilst he was reading Torah, and we are immersed in that now. Listen, what is the story about Aidan Asirat al Mustaqim? Understand the fitna today. What is the corruption today? The straight path, the definition of straight path is what? Anamta alayhim, for which you have given reward Allah. The Holy Prophet sallallahu path is the straight path. His imitation is the straight path. Following him is the straight path. Every sunnah manner of his is the straight path. Our life will be like you, we will walk and talk like you, our dress will be like you, our libas will be like you. Our lifestyle will be like you, our mannerism will be like you. Listen this clear, this is our deen, Islam, lifestyle, for which 50 times a day you do dua, this is why you do dua. That whatever we will do, Allah, we will imitate the Prophet, he is our role model, supreme. Ma'atalakum rasulukum, whatever he tells us, we'll take. Whatever he says, we'll take. We won't accept any other thing apart from what he tells us. After kalima, the mu'min says this, remember this. Don't forget this lesson, this about, otherwise the believer is gone. That's why I'm saying, this is a very fantastic lesson that we are revising today whilst we're here. Never in your life forget this lesson. Whatever we want to do in our life, who do we follow, who do we imitate? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, imitate him, eight to zen. That's why Allah said the sunnah is such a great thawab. There's no thawab for any other action greater than following the sunnah. 
There's no greater reward for any other action in, than compared to following the sunnah. One sunnah who re- revives the sunnah in this day and age when the sunnah is being crushed, how much reward? 100 martyrs reward. When one shaheed, Allah says, you don't know even the reward of one shaheed. Imagine the reward of one shaheed. And what is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ given? 100 shaheed reward. 100 shaheed reward. Understand the impact of sunnah. That's why there's such a big importance because Deen ul Islam equals Sunnah. Deen ul Islam equals Sunnah. So it stated the straight path, the straight path, the path of the Prophet ﷺ Sunnah, and the other thing we learn from here. So there's more transparent, 100% crystal clear. The straight path of the Nabi, Sunnah, and in that is what? No one percentage of contamination should be mixed in that. غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْمُ الْدَّالِينَ No contamination. Is this the case or not? Tell me what we recite. This is our deen. For which 50 times more than that a day in salah, we are in sujood, we're crying and pleading. What do we do then after that? We say this, yes, that there should be no mixture of anything of the other lifestyle in this. It should not meet or resemble man tashabba bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. If you do any contamination, then Allah says, I'll drag you alongside to those people. I don't care about your salah, your words, your sujood, your prostration. I have no concern. I have concern one standard. If you are following footstep by footstep, the Prophet ﷺ, and the second condition, and there's no mixture with any other lifestyle in that. Do you understand the point I'm making? Or you don't understand what I'm saying? Without any contamination, mixture of other stuff, darlin, magdub. Allah says, I don't want to see any resemblance. Yes, Allah says, I don't want to see any mixture in this deen that I've given to you. So what will this be? So there are two factors, two elements, purely 100% according to the sunnah, no contamination. That is deen ul islam, ihdina sirat al That's the definition of this verse. Understand what I'm saying? Now we have to practice this. Where shall I practice this? Pakistan? No, wherever you live, more men if he wants to pass away, then he has to pass away like this, otherwise it's not a proper death. The great verse, I can't remember now, that complete verse in which Allah Ta'ala is clearly telling us, those people who, these two things, when they follow this, these conditions, and if they don't, then they're liars. They're not Muslims if they don't follow these two conditions. They're monophic hypocrites. The whole verse is not coming to my mind right now. Clearly, I'm telling you the translation of this. They're the worst severe punishment is for those who don't follow these two conditions. In the hellfire, they'll be thrown, those people. And it's clearly said, they're those people who keep the friendship and the companionship with those who like them in their heart. They have love for them, affection for them, respect for them. In their heart, they have love, increase their friendship, relationships they enhance. And they know that this is not correct. Mutashabba, imitation, following. Listen to this carefully, what I'm saying. This is the severe warning Allah is giving, severe warning regards those people. That that person, Allah says, monafik, hypocrites, a liar individuals though, who don't follow those two conditions. How can a person is saying he's following my Nabi says, and he contaminates it with something else? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Do you understand the definition of Islam, deen? Do you understand what is fitna now? Evil, the harm, so what are the fitnas? This is fitna what we're discussing. This is fitna. So now let's look around and scan. Tomorrow is Juma, come here, Juma time and see for yourself. They see the role models you'll see physically. Allah has given us a deen of Islam, Allah has given us condition. If you want to be successful, then you must follow the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. That's why we follow Sunnah, because we want to be successful. We don't follow the Sunnah to compete with someone, challenge others, or look down on others, or say they're wrong. No. Yes, they can do what they want, live like they want. We are following Sunnah and Sharia, because Allah has given us a condition that you must follow your Nabi, then you'll be successful. That's why we're practicing the deen, so that we can get the success. They say, fine, you've got permission. There's nothing to argue about, is there? Nothing at all. 
So why should we say bad to those who don't follow Islam? We have no need to say they're disrespectful. Or we say, fine, you can do what you want, it's up to you. You can live like you want, look like you want. That's your lifestyle, that's your mannerism. mannerism. We have nothing against you. We are arguing with those who say, I'm a believer, I'm a Muslim, I believe in Allah and Rasul and then he talks rubbish after that. That's we are, have a quarrel within. We don't have quarrel with those people who don't have the deen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Why should we criticize other people who are not Muslims? Why should we follow, criticize non-Muslims or their lifestyle or mannerism? We have no issue with them. We are following our deen, we want hereafter, and then our religion Allah has taught us, we have adopted our deen ourselves, we looked at other religions, and from all the religions, we like this religion of Islam, recited the kalima, I became a Muslim. So if I'm a Muslim, then I need to learn how to be a Muslim. I read the Quran, in the Quran Allah taught it, then Sirat al-Mustaqim, Sirat al anamta alayhim. I've read this verse, I'm doing Amal on this verse. That's why I'm practicing like this. Yes, I don't need to say bad to others. I'm not looking down at others. I'm not sniggering at others. I'm not criticizing others. I have no concern with others. Say subhanAllah. Yes. So, mashallah, your way of life, congratulations to your labas, your lifestyle and manner. You can do what you want. I have no concern with it. No criticism with it. We are concerned about ourselves, whoever is a Muslim who's believed in Islam. So how can I say that I've accepted Islam and then we do other actions? Then that's wrong. Then our own situation is, is faulty. There's a defect. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Islam, read Islam, study Islam my friends, read and understand what is... So now let's give us the cure. That your hearts, don't worry if they're dark. If you are stuck in a trap, then strengthen your heart, make it better. How? Do the dhikr of Allah and remember Allah. If your weakness has come in your life, for example, today we've analyzed, and you can see there are deficiencies in your life, your heart is weak, it doesn't accept the deen, and you're accepting the things away from the deen, then the cure for that is, وَذْكُرْ of رَبِّكَ Remember Allah fi nafsik. Then do the dhikr of Allah inside your heart. The Quran has told us, isn't it? Yes. What a beautiful style. The whole Naqshbandi dhikr, Allah Ta'ala is prescribing. Allah says, why do you do dhikr? Allah is prescribing dhikr, not a Mulana, not a Mufti. Who is telling us? Allah Himself is telling us. Naqshbandi, the Naqshbandi Uda, learns straight from Allah. That What does the Naqshbandi do? He remembers Allah in his heart. And how does he remember Allah? Tadaru khufiya. But remember Allah says, when you do my dhikr, then do it in such a way, tadaru, extreme humility, and humbleness, and focus, and desire, and passion, and you should lower yourself, and that such you are stood in front of dhul jalal wal ikram, and you are saying Allah's name, this is the man. Tadaru khufiya, Allah says. With humility, minduni jahara, what a beautiful thing, that don't dare to elevate your voice. Because you stood in front of your Rabb, your Lord. Nakshbandi does dhikr like this, doesn't he? We do this, don't we? Allah is telling us, isn't he? Yes. And Allah says, that those who don't do this, don't leave this otherwise, don't be negligent, ignorant. The all of your goodness are put into this dhikr, Allah says. Tell me now. Allah says, don't be the ghafileen. This is what the Quran is saying, isn't it? That this tariqah, mana, method of dhikr, keep it running morning and evening every day, don't leave this, and don't be lazy, ignorant, negligent, because this whole tariqah that I've prescribed to you to be saved from the fitna, this is the tariqah, you'll be saved from the evil and the harms, and your iman will not be disturbed. And you will not die as a person without iman. And inside you, you will not imitate others. Your deen will be khalis and pure. And you will walk around, sit inside, outside, you will be a Muslim. And the angels will be wandering around with you as your colleagues. So brothers, we've learned the tariqah, the, method, the method today. Such a great fitna around us today to be safe from that. Allah has given us a beautiful prescription. So what should we do? So the result of all this discussion today, brothers, we are stuck in the fitnas today. Evils and harms. Let's make true intention in front of Allah. Allah, we want to be safe from the harms and evils around us. Allah, we accept we are very weak. Wherever we're trapped today, we are stood in front of you today. It's in front of me, you. Let's analyze our lives because tomorrow, Allah, we will die as munafiks and better than dying as disbelievers and munafiks. We stand on this in front of Allah today and we assess our lives today. What is that? That Allah, Iman 
and life, my should be such. Never will we leave salah in jamaat and congregation in the masjid. If Allah orders something, then the question doesn't arise that is difficult for us. Never ever. No, once in the life. Just go. And doesn't matter who's your boss, I'm going to pray salah. Even if you leave that, you'll get something better than that. Because you didn't, you're...